Welcome to Books in Sum, your go-to for bite-sized book summaries. The Falcon Method by David Saliomi The Falcon Method is an investment strategy that uses an objective set of metrics to compare and contrast various companies. The author's last name, which translates to Falcon in Hungarian, inspired the work's title. The Falcon strategy concentrates your efforts on a single, highly profitable asset class, namely, shares of publicly traded companies. To better understand the complex financial landscape, this method provides a neutral set of metrics by which businesses can be compared. The following vignettes will explain why stocks are king, how a business works like a black box, and how to manage your investments after you've made the plunge. Bonds are the most common form of currency-based investment because they are directly linked to a national currency. Bonds are issued and repaid in a specific currency, but they have a major drawback. You are betting that the value of the national currency won't increase as a result of inflation. Buffett divides assets into three categories, attractive, productive, and unattractive. Since investors do not receive a return on their investment when holding unproductive assets, they are not desirable. The best assets for accumulating wealth and producing a steady stream of income over time are productive ones, such as a business or real estate purchased with the intention of renting it out. Shares in a company, which represent a portion of ownership and a right to a portion of the profits, are the best productive assets. Investors who don't know how businesses function and how to evaluate them aren't being as prudent as they could be. Author David Van Knapp uses the black box as a useful metaphor for companies in his book Sensible Stock Investing. Pipes are a useful metaphor for thinking about the flow of resources into and out of a business. When evaluating a company, the output pipe that is most crucial to look at is the one that produces profit. Payments to shareholders, such as dividends, share repurchases, and retained earnings, should be tracked by businesses. According to the Falcon strategy, buy and hold portfolios have the highest probability of long-term gains. Quantitative investing involves ranking stocks based on objective quantitative metrics like dividend yield. After the stocks have been ranked, the investor will buy the top performers and keep them for a set period of time, typically a year, before selling. This cycle is continued indefinitely. The Falcon Method is an alternative to traditional quantitative investing that seeks to reduce the influence of human bias and impulse control issues. The strategy promotes a long-term focus and a buy-and-hold mentality. Investors hope to make a profit by selling their stock at a higher price after receiving regular dividend payments and betting on the stock's value rising. The companies that the Falcon Method zeroes in on are those that have maintained a stable dividend payout for at least 20 years. This is due to the fact that other metrics, such as revenue and cash flow figures, can be skewed by unethical activity and unscrupulous accountants, while dividends remain the only truly reliable item in corporate reports. Companies that have maintained their dividend payments for at least 20 years without reducing them are singled out as the primary target of the Falcon Method. The Falcon Method is an adaptable strategy that prioritizes businesses with a track record of never cutting their dividend. You can use it to find stocks at a discount and evaluate a company's response to adversity. The Falcon Method is more adaptable, realizing that it is sometimes better to direct funds toward future-proofing a business. The trick to scoring a steal is realizing that the market sets the value of every company, and that value changes every day. Companies that have reliable and consistent earnings tend to outperform the market making dividend-paying companies the darlings of investors. Investors use the Falcon method to save money by buying shares of profitable companies when their prices are lower than the market norm. The value of a company is determined by looking at its assets, financial health, and potential, and then comparing that to the share price in the past. In times of widespread pessimism, stock prices fall in relation to the asset's fundamental value, which tends to be stable. Step 3 of the Falcon Method involves developing trustworthy filters to narrow down your stock picks. These filters can include dividend yield, free cash flow yield, and shareholder yield. The dividend yield of a stock is the annualized payout divided by the stock price. To calculate the free cash flow yield, divide the stock's current price by the amount of free cash flow it is expected to generate in the next year. Divide the dividend a stock promises to pay its shareholders in the next year by the stock's current price to determine its yield. The Falcon Method is a criterion that is frequently disregarded by investors. The ratio is based on the current share price and the company's free cash flow yield. Free cash flow per share is the result of dividing the free cash flow yield of a company by the number of outstanding shares in the company. The shareholder yield of a company is a measure of the total amount of money returned to shareholders through dividends and share repurchases. In order to apply these filters to business, minimum values for all three indicators must be established. 
Instead of using a simple, one-dimensional ranking system, the Falcon method uses a weighted multifactor ranking system to determine which stocks are the best and then rank them accordingly in the fourth step. Dividend yield, free cash flow yield, and shareholder yield are the three metrics used in the Falcon method to determine which businesses are more valuable. The optimal weight for each component in the final score is 33.3%. As a result, Stocka would end up with a total score of 7.3. In the case of Stock B, this would translate to an 8.9 overall grade. The Falcon method recommends using a variant of the Chowder rule, which evaluates a stock's dividend against its growth potential. The protocol functions by summing the dividend yield and the dividend growth rate over the past five years for a given stock. However, looking at data for only the past five years can obscure the bigger picture. Rather, the Falcon method suggests building multiple chowder rules with different time horizons and using each as a factor in the weighted ranking. In the final step of the Falcon method, your own discretion is encouraged. Both the ROIC indicator and cyclical stocks are crucial factors to think about before making a final investment decision. The return on invested capital indicator is a common feature of modern trading software, and it measures a company's prowess in allocating its resources toward revenue-generating endeavors. A high return on invested capital is a positive sign that a company is making good use of its available capital. Another characteristic of cyclical stocks is extreme price volatility, with both sharp increases and decreases. Such cyclical patterns are typical in highly unstable markets like the ones for oil and cryptocurrencies. The Falcon method is a method of investing that is both methodical and apolitical, with an emphasis on careful analysis of potential investments and a buy-and-hold mentality. It has a systematic approach that prioritizes dividend-paying companies over the short term and uses rigorous filters to eliminate poor investments. The average trader can put these strategies to the test by compiling a list of companies by looking at a popular index of companies like the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S&P 500. The Falcon Method recommends a methodical and detached approach to investing, with an emphasis on careful analysis of individual businesses and a commitment to the buy-and-hold strategy. Directions for taking action. Investigate the situation. Now that you understand the Falcon Method, you can put it to the test by compiling your own set of businesses. We hope you found this summary helpful in your listening journey. If you're interested in diving deeper into the topic or getting your hands on the whole book, be sure to check the description below where we've included links to the book and other related products that may be useful to you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on our latest book summaries. And feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions or requests for books you'd like us to cover. Thanks again for tuning in and happy listening.